You're listening to KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. The opinions and views expressed in this program do not reflect those of KUCI, its management, or the UC Board of Regents. To find out more about this talk show or other talk shows broadcasting on KUCI, log on to our website at KUCI.org or check out the latest program guide. This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Skylight Theater for their presentation of The Lost Child. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Peter James Smith. Um, well, I play Daniel in uh, The Lost Child here at the Skylight Theater, and uh, I've been acting in L.A., gosh, for a couple decades now, and I like it here a lot. And what's your take on Daniel? Gosh, he's just, you know, a guy trying to do his best uh, after a tragedy it hit his family seven years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he makes some mistakes, but I think he's good at heart. I like this piece a lot, but... To be perfectly honest, I don't understand it. I don't know what I saw. What, 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 if my viewers came by and, and, and saw this piece, what should they expect to see? Oh, gosh. Um, there, it's hard for me to say. Like Every person has a different theory. Um, it seems like the people it hits emotionally the most are people who have raised children to adulthood. Um, and then I have another friend who's very into like sci-fi and mythology, and he was really trying to break down the, the structure of the piece and, and how you know, the, the ending is similar to the beginning, and he was trying to figure that out and why that was working out. It's so interesting to hear how different people take different things from it. So I think... When you come, audience member listening to me, um, I'd like to hear what you think because it seems to be each person has a different take on it. I actually saw a play about a man, a guy who actually was abducted when he was a child, and he wrote a piece. It was bizarre because he himself didn't know, am I telling the truth here? I'm saying what I think happened, and that's kind of... The, well, everyone's memory, is, everyone's memory is flawed, I think. Yeah, and that... I, I see, because, you know, if I was in, in the playwright, no one writes something for nothing at all. If someone writes something about someone losing their child, either they really lost their child or the child ran away, and suddenly your memory just suddenly gets flawed. It's like, did I ever yell? No, I never yelled at my kid. <laughs> How's that possible? How could someone never yell? Obviously, I yelled at my How come I don't remember any of this? You know, it was like that. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is true. And as far as what you said earlier about, you know, why someone would write something, and I don't know if I want to say this because... Like again, I want the audience to have their experience of it, but I think our playwright, from what she's told us, you know, it's kind of inspired by things in her own life and you know the raising of her kids, and and um, so I know that my sister, who's also raised kids of her own to adulthood, that she just resonated really emotionally with this piece. Yeah, I did too, because again, there's a lot of truth in it. It's like when, when someone's child passes away, there's like an eighty percent chance they get divorced. When again, I. I I saw a play, I interviewed someone about someone who was abducted. Your memory, you can't depend on your memory anymore. It's like suddenly you're not, it's like you're not whole anymore. It's like part of you just disappeared, you know what I mean? Really bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean on, a, on a lesser level, you know, it's like if you're in a relationship, like the two of you can remember the same incident completely differently. Okay. And also love the way you play it. You, because your character brought out a lot of these feelings, uh, which are really dark feelings. <laughs> and uh, unless you've actually... You've done some of those bizarre things, you know. It's hard for you. You have to be a very good actor to do that. So I, I really what appreciate the, it. What are some of the bizarre things you mean? I don't want to talk about that. Oh, okay. Because, you know, because some, yeah. it'll give away some of the story. Yeah. But some of those very dark. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the dark sides of it. And that, it was very realistic. And I'm pretty sure you've never done things like that. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now I need to know what you're talking about. But, um... I mean, I, I guess I have to probably, probably credit um, our director. You know, she's, she has raised a child, and she really created the world, even from the beginning, you know, with the way the webs come down. Um, so she was able to guide us in a way that maybe, you know, I don't know if I could have found it myself. Okay. Once again, I really love the piece. I didn't understand the piece. So, again, that, but I like that. Sometimes, I mean, you don't want to go to a theater where you can just figure A plus B is going to equal C. This one here, I was given even the explanation inside there. I kind of doubt that a little bit. I think it had, I personally think it had to do with something else, right? So again, I, there's an explanation, like in, there's one in the in the program? In the one, no, in the story, the, the oh. one the girl gave. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, I just didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I just didn't believe that. Okay. And I feel that it had to do with the fact, well, it had to do with the story. So again, I really, I really love the piece. Oh, cool, I'm glad, I'm glad. Okay, and I really enjoyed your acting. Thank you very much for being on the show. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with... My name is Addie Daddio, and yes, it's my real name because everybody always asks me. I've been an actor for all of my life, and uh, it is always an honor and a privilege to be able to work as an actor, and that's what we've been doing with The Lost Child. Great. And which character do you play? I play Anne. What's your take on Anne? You know, it's a complex, deep, uh, challenging role for me. She's got a lot going on. Anne has been through, she's been through the mill and back. She's lost her child. She doesn't know where her child is. She doesn't know if she's dead or alive. And as anyone can imagine, and as we know, you know, we hear people all the time, I mean, the worst thing that could happen to anyone is to lose their child. Um, so she struggles with that. She's been institutionalized because of that. She has been tortured by the public because of that. And she's been tortured by herself because she does doesn't know. So um, poor Anne has quite the journey uh, uphill back back to life, but she does make that journey. So for me, it's an exciting roller coaster ride of low to high to middle to high to low to high to low. I, I like this piece. I, I really liked it a lot, but to be perfectly honest, I didn't understand it. Just, <laughs> I did not understand it. But you know, a lot, a lot about theater, I, the great pieces really, I feel, should leave you questioning to the point you're thinking about it for years and all that. And this is one of those pieces. Yeah, I really have to agree with you. You know, the, when I first read the script, when the script was brought to me, I was so intrigued by it. And from beginning to end throughout the journey, you know, you start thinking, oh, it might be this or it could be that. And then you start working on it. And what's so great is that it's a world premiere. We got to work directly with the writer. So we got a lot more insight than I had right at the, right at the onset. But at the beginning, I wasn't sure either. <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure what it was about or where it was going to go, but it's had this evolution, you know, for all of us, you know, as a, as a company and as an ensemble of actors, we've all taken this journey together and it's changed, you know, what the intent was, what was really happening. It's changed and, and grown as we've worked on it and rehearsed it and performed it and tweaked it and, cha- and changed it. So I like exactly what you said. The beauty of theater is that everyone has a different response and I love pieces. I love books. I love art. I love anything that makes you go, Hmm, I'm not exactly sure. I got to think about that for a little bit because you know, days later, you're going to have another thought. You're going to go, "Oh, wait a second. I know. It. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I get it now. Or it could have been. Or maybe." And the beauty is, there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. You know, I actually once did a piece. I interviewed a guy who he he was really abducted, and oh he wrote God. a piece about. It. And he, in the piece, he he told me things like he wasn't sure if this really happened. Yeah. He thought he made, made 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 the whole thing up. And that's, that, that, that resonated with me at this point. It's kind of like, that's why I don't know what's going on. The one, and I, I was thinking, why would the writer write something like this? And bizarre things, dark things hit my mind. And that's why, the, again, the, that's why I love the piece. I love the piece because there was enough in it that I realized... I kind of kind of got a sense of where I was. Wow, that's really interesting that you would say, you know, that it would take you to a, a dark place. And and again, that's the beauty of any kind of art experience is that what what I love as an artist is that you people people just have something else. They get an experience. Something else comes out of it. They recognize something in themselves that they were either they didn't know was there or they were afraid to look at or they see it and now they recognize it. So that's that's very exciting about it. But you know, as I said, everybody gets a different takeaway. You know, is it a dream? Did it really happen? Just like that poor gentleman that you said who was abducted. We can only imagine in our deepest, darkest places of what that could be like. And you go, wow, is this a dream? Is this happening? Who's, and we always talk about whose point of view is the play coming from? Like where, but it's coming from every one of them, their point of view. So there, there adds another layer of mystery and uncertainty. But again, you get to make that choice. You get to say, hey, this was about this, or it wasn't about that, or she was dreaming, or she wasn't dreaming, or this is horrific, or imagine what. And then, of course, as uh, one of the things as a family, we go through it all. There's the love, there's the hate, the disappointment, the, you know, and that's very true of all of our interpersonal relationships. We have so many expectations of each other, right? It should be like that. We have the way love needs to look like this. A person needs to look like that. It needs to feel this way. And these characters all bring that to the surface. I love you. I hate you. I love you. You're funny. That's cute. I love that. Oh, here you are. Oh, this is why I fell in love with you, but this is why I fell out of love with you. And so... It's kind of a, a myriad of a, 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 a it's, it's like a spider's web. It's so intertwined and it goes round and round. And I loved your performance because you, you, you actually experienced all that. You, you, you saw the highs, the lows. You were 
in love, you were in hate, you were, you were a mother, you, were, you weren't a mother, and, all, and you, went through, you went through the entire rainbow. So you were, you, you were pulled left and right, and I really feel that's what's very challenging for an actor. It is challenging, and thank you so much. I appreciate it. But those are the roles that you love so much. There's so much to work with and so many places to go. And again, the beauty of live theater is it's always it's a, it's a living organism. It's never the same, and hopefully it changes, and we grow, and our characters change and grow, and we become more comfortable, and the, the set is our home. These people are our family, and I love every moment of the exhausting <laughs> experience that it is okay. once again i really love the performance i really love your acting in it too thank you yeah. thank you very much for being on the show no thank you so much for having me it's an honor thank you hi my name is ashton marcus i'm with kuci 88.9 fm in irvine and i'm here with marilyn vittoria uh graduated from cal state long beach been acting for a couple of years and my favorite pastime are video games <laughs> I played Angelica in The Lost Child. She is, you know, like your average child. You know, you're manipulative, jealous. Uh, from ages 11 to 18, she envelops all that from a character, from from an actual child to, you know, a, a tween and a teen. I really love the way you played it. Actually, I think of, of all the actors, the talented actors tonight, you had the most challenging role. It was almost like you were a fantasy character, an artificial character, and you actually played it very well. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's um, it was it was a lot of work. You know, I had to take I take um, a long time to like actually capture it because she actually is supposed to grow from 11 to 18. So capture the essence of 11 to 12, 13, 14, all the way to 18 in such a short amount of time was extremely difficult. However, I feel like with um, all the people that helped me out, like just our team in general, um, we were able to help me out and also myself. Just you know, just digging into this character a lot. I love the story, but. I didn't understand the story. I just, all in a, I just did not understand the story. But it uh, doesn't mean I, uh, I can't appreciate it. Because, again, I, the great theater that I go to, is, it's like that. Usually I don't totally understand the story. It's, it's above me. Yeah, so um, the key thing was uh, what happened here. And a lot of people have taken it with like what happened here. So it's very, um, you have to really pick at it. You know, you have to maybe watch it a couple of times to see exactly what happened. Like, did it happen this way? Did it happen that way? Um, so it's a very challenging play. But I feel like it... It's a, it's a type of um, project where it makes you have a lot of questions, and that's what we want to have for people. Once again, I really love the play. I really love your acting. I thought, I thought you did a fantastic job. Because, you know, again, I've seen places, places where someone's supposed to take me to another world, mm -hmm. you know, a play like that. And in a theater, you can't do that. You can't just bring up Mars and just say, okay, you're on Mars. The only way you can do that is have the actor do that with their voice, with their body, with their, with their acting. And you actually brought me to another world. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Yeah, like I said, um, you know, I just have my my vision of what this parallel thing is, what um, my uh, my secret was, and I just needed to share it to my parents and to all of you guys. Yeah. Okay. Once again, I, re I really love your performance. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, eighty-eight point nine FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Denise Blasser. First of all, what what drew you to this piece anyway? What drew me, when I read the, the script originally, uh, it was terrifying. It was such an interesting concept of what family is all alive, about. Um, the concept of perfection in a family and then how humanity takes over and how it just the sum, it breaks down. And, uh, and all the possibilities of the story, whether it is um, uh, the story of a child that's come back, that's, a really, that's really a child, or whether there re really was a crime that night. It, it was a story that was so full and so rich that it truly attracted me. And then, uh, you know, after the casting, it was just really neat to explore all the possibilities and all the, all the possibilities of the story. Well, first of all, I really, I love the story, but I, I kind of didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I was, in, I was supposed to understand it. It's okay. It's okay not to understand it. It's, it's a story that you're not going to drop overnight. You're going to be thinking about it. You're going to dream about, about what the story is all about because it's going to bring you back to your own youth, to your own growth, to your own family. Um, the story touches many things. It, it touches... Um, 
uh, what it is to be a teenager. You know, the the hormones, uh, the hormones start to work themselves out, and the relationship between mother and child, and how complicated they are, um, and and basically what it is to release yourself, and uh, uh, once you accept what it is to release your child, so that your child can actually be free, and you as a parent, how you yourself have through the experience released yourself as well. Uh, it's all allegorical in many ways and uh, it's it's told in a in a in a fable type of uh, uh, story and uh, so w the question keeps on going what happened here throughout the play. So as that's happening you're dissecting and making it into your own ideas of what what happened. What are we seeing? What are we really believing? What is the truth? What is you know, I actually once uh, interviewed a person who wrote a play. Mm -hmm. He was actually really abducted. Mm -hmm. It was a real abduction. Mm -hmm. And when I asked him questions, he said things like, I don't know if I, this really happened. I might have made up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He was just so damaged mm -hmm. by this situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I'm thinking it probably did happen, but he psychologically doesn't remember mm -hmm. if this was the truth or not. Right. So uh, that, that's what I, I, I think this piece is like. We as the audience, we're traveling and we're seeing all these possibilities and it's opening all channels in your head and, uh, and, and going back to your own youth and what happened to your relationship for myself, like what happened to the relationship with me and my mother. And I'm a mother, so my relationship of my daughter, who sometimes is like a fairy. Um, so, uh, so that's what's happening to my thinking. I also love the, all the actors in there. It's very challenging for the mm -hmm. actors here, but I love them. What, uh, what, what do you look for in your casting? In the casting. Well, for this particular piece, uh, it was interesting because we needed for the audience to really believe that it was a family. And uh, I fell in love with a young child. Uh, well, she's not a child. She's a young woman. Uh, in her, And she's Latina. So... Um, so I definitely wanted to use her. So then I needed to find two other actors that would match her in some way. And um, and um, when Addie came, her, her she was so giving and so open and so vulnerable. And that's what I look for. My actors need to be, they need to trust me, number one, and I need to trust them. And, uh, and that's done through being completely open, opening your heart, and, and not being afraid. So during the audition, which were long hours, um, she just went with the material, and then I started matching her. I matched her with Peter, and Peter was so sensitive. And, um, and that was just such a great combination, because here we had a vulnerable woman, a sensitive man full of anger in, in, in the character and a child that was magical. So that was the combination. <laughs> okay. Well, I love the piece. Again, mm -hmm. I didn't understand the piece, but again, in great theater, it's mm -hmm. something that transcends me. It's above me. And exactly. All that. and, and that's what theater is all about. It's about trans transcending and, 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 and feeling it and being part of it. And you as the audience being transported and feeling this ride, because it is a ride. I mean, it's like uh, putting yourself in a train and there's no brakes and you're going to go all the way to the end. So the music was written by my daughter. And uh, so that was, she lives in you know, far away. She doesn't live near. So it was also a neat thing to integrate her, my fairy, into, into, into the story. Once again, I really like the piece. I love your direction in it. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. The Lost Child will be playing at Skylight Theater in Hollywood from July 29th to September 3rd. For more information, go to www.skylighttheater.org. This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Pan Andreas Theater in Hollywood for their production of On the 20th Century. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Trace Oakley. I directed the show On the 20th Century. So question, why do you decide to direct this piece? Well, this has been one of my favorite musicals for years. And um, when, uh, I mean, I never, you know, it was just one of those dream projects, but it was sort of uh, seemed like a pipe dream for a long time. Um, once we had started this theater company and uh, Elena Bernardi, my, my co-founder, co-producer, fell in love with the show as well. 
we felt like with two shows under our belt with this company that we felt like we could take this one on. And um, it was you know, a huge challenge uh, that you know, there were times we didn't think we could get through it, but in the end we've been really happy with the way it's turned out and, and really, really glad that we took on the challenge, that we you know, climbed the mountain. Yeah. Well, actually, first of all, uh, I usually go to openings. Uh, I actually missed the opening for this one because I had to be on another show. Someone called me up and actually said that you were requesting me to come here. So I thought, it turns out that I had a free night tonight. So what the heck, I might as well come. <laughs> and I was, I'm glad I came. I mean, this was such a charming little thing. It's like a, stumbling upon a little gem that no one would else, else know about. Well, you know, that's kind of uh, the mission of our theater company is, is revisiting neglected shows. Really good shows that for whatever reason people don't do anymore. So, you know, with Rudigore, and then when we did Carry That Tune, which was a, sh a show with the great songs from, from musicals that nobody knows, and then on the 20th century, um, and, and plays as well, we're, we're looking to revisit those lost gems. What, what, what style would it be? I would say it'd be like, you know, a nostalgic piece. There was tap dancing in it. It was, uh, it was dated, dated probably in the 1920s, 1930s? 1930s, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a farce and it's an operetta, which is a very strange marriage. Uh, but I think that's that's part of what makes it just so unique and so interesting is these two genres that you wouldn't associate with one another. Yeah. Huge cast, wonderful singers, the, the, the good dancers, and excellent actors. Uh, what do you look for in your casting? Well, uh, we look for for a show like this, obviously versatility. I mean, with a show with a score like this, you've got to have people who can really, really sing. Uh, so that's kind of where we started, but uh, you also have to have people who can act. And then, you know, it's not it, it's not a huge dance show except for the porters. So we weren't trying to find your know, entire cast of dancers, uh, just just uh, some who could tap. But uh, yeah, the singing and acting, uh, you know, that it, this was a very challenging show to cast. Yeah, again, but I, I, fantastic job. I loved all the actors. I wish I could have actually gotten more interviews because they were so talented. I just love. I just love speaking to the younger actors. So again, once again, I really love the music. I really love the uh, the acting. I loved everything. About it. Thank you once again for being on the show. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. I'm so happy you could see it. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Wade Kelly. I've been doing theater and some performing here in LA for a while, all around the country. And uh, which character did you play? I played Oscar Jaffe tonight. He's a megalomaniac, uh, lovable, lovable, uh, just a sweetheart. Uh, would do anything for anybody, especially if he can get what he wants out of it. <laughs> I love your performance. You're uh, fantastic. Thank you. You, you know, you remind me a lot of Zero Mostel. Why, that is a huge compliment. Uh, I, John Barrymore did the movie, but um, I, I like Zero Mostel too. But I'm more handsome than Zero, right? <laughs> yeah, you're definitely well, easier on the eyes. Uh, but I saw the acting. I saw the. I also love your singing too. Very, a very character type singing. We, we actually just act your singing also. Why? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take that as a compliment as well. <laughs> Zero, Zero Mostel, I think, is fantastic. Anybody says anything uh, compares me to anything about Zero Mostel, I'm way over head over heels. You know, if my viewers came by and saw this, what should they expect to see? Oh, they should expect to see a lot of fun uh, singing, uh, a farce, uh, a, a fast-moving comedy farce with great music, Cy Coleman, and uh, a lot of exuberant young performers, and then there's me on the other end. <laughs> no. I, I, again, I loved it. It was a real... First of all, it was a real nostalgic piece. If you like that, I mean, unless, unless you're going to see something like, you know, a, a, you know, a touring production of Anything Goes, you're not going to see something like this with a cast this big, singing of this style and all that. And again, it's very entertaining because every now and then you want to see one of those things. This is a piece I've never seen before, but extremely entertaining. Yeah, in 1978, it was on Broadway, and it was based on a play that was on Broadway in the 30s and then a movie that was made in the 30s and but it's a uh, it's a classic uh, it's a classic piece of theater once again I really loved I love your performance you're fantastic I'm surprised I've never met you before uh, uh, you can keep going you can keep <laughs> saying more and more if you want yeah. <laughs> no thank yeah. you very much okay. I appreciate it yeah. thank you once again for being on the show thank you hi my name is Ashton Marcus I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine and I'm here with 
Elena Bernardi. I am a singer. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and uh, I am the founder, co-founder of the Proofed Out Closer Theater Company, and a star, Lily Garland, of On the 20th Century. The thing with Lily is Lily's a really complex character. She has like multiple different. Well, I have to play multiple different personalities when I play her because she's like Mildred Plotka, who is like the person she was before she became famous, which is like this like really shy, like awkward piano player and then she is uh Lily Garland, who she is for the public, which is like this like overly extravagant and glamorous person. And then there's who she is when she's with Oscar, which is like this in love puppy dog. So I have to kind of like understand how to d d get all the dimensions of her that way. I really love this piece. Actually, I, I kind of stumbled upon this thing because, you know, I remember when I was in San Francisco and sometimes I'd go to a restaurant and the food, it would be a small restaurant, but the food would be fantastic and I would just love it. This is kind of like the same thing. I kind of stumbled upon the small theater. I knew the director a little bit and I've, I've seen some of your pieces and really, all that. I've, but this is fantastic. I remember you from Rudigore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, again, this this was just fantastic. Though. Again, it's a piece I haven't seen before. Very entertaining, lovely singing, lovely acting. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very proud of everybody. Yeah, it's actually kind of a, a throwback. Uh, uh, what, what kind of style would you say? This? Um, it's a it's a musical farce operetta. Like that's its genre. But we kind of made it a little bit different in the sense that like we added a little jazz combo to accompany us. It's not accompanied by an orchestra, and um, you know I think it's it's got a little bit of a, a contemporary take on it in the sense that like we scaled it all down and had it be really intimate for the audience. Well, I love the character you play too because, again, because it was nostalgic, you're allowed to be larger than life. You're allowed to yeah, really yeah, yeah. exaggerate your acting yeah. without it being inappropriate. So right. I just love the way you played it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you once again for being on the show. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 <laughs> FM in Irvine. And I'm here with Nate Beals. I'm here with the uh, the Pan and Dre's Theater, uh, the theater company Proofed Out Closer. Uh, we just we just finished uh, on the 20th century. Uh, we're all uh, uh, feeling good after this. Uh, uh, the energy's up. Uh, how you doing? I really love the performance. It's actually very nostalgic. Yeah. If, if you're actually into that type of thing, because again, it was very actually very charming. Yes, yes. It's uh, it's a period piece. It takes uh, place in the 30s, so uh, it's got that charm. It's got that uh, that nostalgia factor. It's uh, it's done in a kind of black box style, but uh, we we try to like bring the the grandeur of the old uh, Hollywood golden era to the stage so yeah we're, we're having fun yeah now, I really love the piece again because you know I remember when I was in San Francisco every now and then I'd go to a restaurant a really small restaurant food would be fantastic and it would be just just a gem and that's kind of like what I felt like here I stumbled into the place very small <laughs> but it was a very professional production the singers were fantastic acting was fantastic also wow awesome thank you man thanks that means a lot yeah uh, that's great. <laughs> so, uh, which part did you play again? Uh, I played uh, Owen O'Malley, uh, and so he, he's kind of like a press agent. Uh, he's helping out. Uh, the main uh, producer is Oscar Jaffe, and I'm helping him get back with his ex-girlfriend, who is a uh, famous movie star, Lily Garland, uh, played by Elena Bernardi. What's your take on your character? Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm kind of like a, uh, a drunk, a slob, he's kind of like the comic relief kind of, uh, character, uh, it's just like a lot of fun to just, you know, I get a lot of the, uh, the, the one-liners and, uh, it's fun, yeah. yeah. Once again, I really love the performance. I loved you in the performance. You, you were fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Uh, thank you, yeah, thank you very much for being on the show. On the 20th Century, we'll be playing at Pan Andreas Theater in Hollywood from August 4th to the 27th. For more information, go to www.proofdoubtcloser.com.